Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World. Welcome to a wrap up. These are the books that I read, classic books that I read in the month of February, March 2021 that haven't featured in other videos and other wrap ups. So I'm actually going to start with a book that I have been browsing through over the last um, week or so because this book was so, so kindly bought for me by one of my lovely viewers. So I need to say a huge, huge thank you to Anna. Anna very kindly picked this book off my Amazon wish list, and it is the Women's Suffrage Cookery book. And it has been republished by the British Library. I think it was republished in 2020. And essentially, it is a cookery book which was created by the Birmingham branch of the NUWSS, so the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies, and it's a collection of different recipes, breakfast stuff, lunch stuff, puddings and desserts, and there's also some householdy tips in the back as well, and I've been flicking through it and just been having the most wonderful, wonderful read of it. And yeah, I'm so glad that I've got it. I think I'm gonna do a whole video making something from this. So I just, yeah, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to Anna. So um, thank you, Anna. This is so, so kind of you. Honestly, when I set up the Animism wish list, I didn't think anyone would really do it. Um, it's just something that I've been asked to do. And I thought perhaps people were asking because they want to see what books on my wish list so they can add to theirs. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't realize that people would actually buy me something. So thank you so, so much. I have had one or two people ask, if they live in a different country, can they send me things? And I, to be honest, I don't know how you send off an Amazon wish list if you live in a different country to the person that you're sending to. So if anybody does know how that works out, I obviously live in England and if someone doesn't live in England, but they want to send me something, how does that work? If you could drop that in the comments section, that would be great. Sorry if you could hear that, that was Puppy. Puppy's ever so tired, we went out this morning and he was wanting to play with his ball a lot, which he did do, but I think he's tired himself out. So oh, I'm so excited to have this. There's a couple of different bits that I've got my eye on to make. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to doing that. There's like, there's a recipe to make furniture polish. <laughs> so I don't think I'll be doing that, but yeah, there's a couple of cakes that I've got my eye on. So I think I'm gonna make at least one. So thank you so, so much, Anna. Um, yeah, it's so kind of you. And yeah, this book is, feels very, very special to me because it was bought for me from Anna, who's a viewer of mine. So thank you so much, Anna. And I know you've really enjoyed my videos during lockdown. So hopefully you'll enjoy this one too. So thank you, thank you, thank you again. Right, so I'll stop, I'll stop saying thank you. It's such a British thing, isn't it? Thank you and sorry, sorry. <laughs> right, books that I read in February and March. I haven't done, a single wrap-up for February and a single wrap-up March, I put them together. Reason being, I didn't film a lot of February. I don't know why, I was just having one of those days where I didn't want to film loads, so I didn't film loads, but here we are with February. Uh, so starting in February, I reread Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding. This book is now 25 years old. It is deemed a contemporary classic, hence why it's in this wrap up. Um, this beautiful edition is one that I treated myself to. So my edition of Bridget Jones's Diary that I had when I first read it, which was, I think I was probably about 18, 19 when I first read it, it's actually currently in my loft. And I really fancied rereading the book because I, over Christmas there was um, a documentary on because this book is now 25 years. And so they did kind of like a BBC documentary type thing about Helen Fielding and how the book came about and how that it's the first kind of book of its kind sort of thing and I really enjoyed watching the documentary and it really made me want to reread Bridget Jones again. So I bought myself this beautiful copy which is part of the Penguin uh, Ink series and it's just beautiful. I think it's so stunning. I love the French flaps, the deckled edges, that's the back. And then that one's the end. I just think it's so gorgeous. And you know what? I loved rereading this. When I read it for the first time, when I was like 18, 19, I thought the film was better than the book. This time round, I think because I'm closer to Bridget's age, I actually loved them both equally. Um, and if you've never read them, 
I highly recommend them. They're very funny, very much out of date now, actually. There's a lot of stuff in here that you couldn't get away with, like um, her boss comes into the lift and he pinches her bum and it's like, oh, you can't do that anymore. Um, like how they got away with it then is very different to how you'd get away with it now. Well, you wouldn't get away with it now, but it's about Bridget who is living in London. She lives in a, a flat. She is single. She's kind of infatuated by her boss and she smokes like a chimney, drinks like a fish. And in her eyes, she is constantly battling her weight. And it's about all of that, relationships, friendships, self-worth, self-care, but it's very funny. And yeah, five star reread. I think it was three stars when I first read it, but I absolutely adored it on the reread. I think, as I said, I'm closer to Bridget's age now, so I think I get get some of the things that she's going through. Okay, so next I read Miss Mole by E. H. Young. This is a beautiful reprinted copy. Do you just love this? I think it's stunning. This is published by Virago Modern Classics. This is a book from 1930. And this is about a woman called Hannah Mole. Hannah Mole has um, spent the last like 20 years or whatever being like a, a companion to older ladies, but she wants a change and so with help she manages to get a new position um, as a housekeeper in the area in which she grew up but because she's gone back to this area and other people know her and they don't want to be associated with her she has to keep secrets and it's interesting shall we say <laughs> um this took me a little while to get into i've read a book by E. H. Young before which was chatterton square which i liked i didn't love it uh, but I did enjoy it. This one I enjoyed much more. It's one of those things I think that once you've got it, a, a person's writing style you do generally enjoy, enjoy their books much more and that was certainly the case for this book. Once I got her writing I just wanted to read it all the time but it did take me a little while to get into it. I really enjoy how He H. Young describes all her characters are all so vivid in my head and yeah definitely worth read if you haven't picked it up already uh, particularly now that there is such a beautiful edition out there for you to pick. Then <laughs> I finally got round to reading Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy. So if you watched a video of mine which was classic books I want to get to soon I filmed that quite a while ago and slowly been working my way through them. Slowly definitely being the operative word in that sentence. And I have been putting off certain ones. I know I have. This one was definitely one that I was putting off. And then for Hannah Tay's book club, so Hannah runs a booktube channel called Hannah Tay and she does a monthly book club and the one for February was Tess of the Durbervilles. And I thought, right, I am going to do it. I am going to read it. So I read it. Um, where to begin? <laughs> okay, so I struggled with this book but I thought I was going to, but I loved the story of this. The story of this is heartbreakingly sad. The ending, I felt like my heart was literally breaking into a thousand pieces. If you've read the book or if you've watched any adaptation, you will know the end. The other bit, which is horrendous to read. Uh, there's just so many bits in this that were just heartbreaking and so sorrowful and I was so sad reading this book so so much but what an absolute masterpiece of a story what an absolute masterpiece it is the bit that I struggled with wasn't the sorrow yes of course it was the sorrow it's a sad book and sad books are hard to read but it does make you want to keep going the difficult bit for me was the paragraphs about absolutely nothing. I have no idea what Thomas Hardy was going on about sometimes. I was like, what are you talking about? Nothing, it's just filling void. And I'd be in the story and I'd be like, and then suddenly whoosh, out you come because it's a paragraph about a blade of grass or a leaf of a tree or just nothingness, literally nothing, describing nothing. Or some, he's just probably describing something, but I just don't get it. Atmosphere is probably describing the atmosphere. Um, 
So, yeah. I love the story, didn't like the writing style. I need an abridged version. <laughs> I think that's what I need. I think I need an abridged version of this book and I'd actually probably really like it. I have seen an adaptation with it. Uh, the one with Gemma Arterton, I think. Is it Gemma Arterton? I think so. Um, which uh, <laughs> makes me feel the same as the book, to be honest. Um, yes, Tessa the Durville's a masterpiece, but I didn't like the writing. <laughs> That's how I feel about Hardy, I think. Um, and I'd like you to tell me what I should do now with Hardy. Should I try and carry on? Should I try and read something else? Should I just go, no, I've done Tess, that's enough. Um, at the moment, I'm definitely having a break from him, but I am slightly inclined to pick up a Dickens. <laughs> I'm like, if I could do Hardy, I could do Dickens. I did Dickens at school, but I haven't done Dickens since school, so yeah. Let me know, please. Okay, we are moving on to March now. Starting off, we have Vera. This is by Elizabeth von Arnhem. I love Elizabeth von Arnhem. I'm sure you know this. Vera is one of the inspirations for Rebecca by Daphne de Romo, which is a book that I don't like. This first was published in 1921 and very much sounds like Rebecca. So it's, well, sort of, it's about this woman, what's her name? Lucy, that's it. Lucy's father dies. And on the day that her father dies, she meets this guy. What's his name? Oh my gosh, what is his name? Wymus. Wemus. Wim Ed Everard Wymus. I don't know. Let's just call it Everard. Um, she meets him and it's this kind of whirlwind romance and they end up getting married, etc. And they end up going back to his house to live. But he is a widower. And the house is kind of like haunted by his first wife sort of thing. Not literally, but you know what I mean. Um, think Daphne de Barrio's Rebecca, that kind of atmospheric of Rebecca's still there. His first wife, Vera, is still there. I liked this. I, I don't like Jane Eyre, really. I don't like Rebecca, really. Well, mm, difficult. I don't like Jane Eyre because I don't like the character of Jane. Otherwise, I actually think that book is a masterpiece. It's brilliant. I don't like Rebecca because I don't like the writing, so I found it difficult. This book, I liked, but it's just, do you know what? I just don't think these books are my thing. I think it's too dark for me, even though they're not really that dark. And I'm just, I just don't think I'm that type of person, but I'm glad I've read it because I know lots of people have been reading this at the moment and loving it. Um, I think if I really liked Rebecca more, I'd probably like that more. But I still liked it. I preferred it to the other two. <laughs> oh dear. Just getting myself all tangled up here, aren't I? All right, then I read a Marjorie Sharp. This is The Nutmeg Tree. This is one of her most well-known ones. This is from 1937. And this is about a woman called Julia. Julia has lived quite an interesting life because she was um, married and she had a child, she had a daughter, but she has been out of her daughter's life for a number of years. Now the daughter, who lives with her grandparents, um, wants to get married. Grandparents aren't happy about it, so um, the mother comes back in, um, invited by the daughter to kind of chat about it and stuff. Um, I didn't love it. <laughs> Sad to say, I was kind of gutted by this because I had heard so many good things about this, but do you know what? It just wasn't me. It just didn't feel cosy enough for me. I think because it's not set in an English cosy village, I think perhaps that's what I was craving at the time. Um, or I don't know. I don't know. There's just something about this that I just didn't love. I did like it just didn't love it. A standard kind of three star book and kind of like my least favourite Marjorie Sharp that I've ever read actually. So, so, I mean, most people love The Nutmeg Tree. I'll definitely give it a reread at some point because I may be wrong. Who knows? 
And then lastly, for March, I read Mrs. Tim of the Regiment by D.E. Stevenson. I do love my D.E. Stevenson. This um, book was first published, when were you first published? In 1940. But this book is really interesting because D.E. Stevenson in 19, was it 1916, I want to say? Do, 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 do. Yeah, in 1916, she married a officer, an army officer. And she kept a diary. And then later on, a friend of hers, her daughter was then going to marry uh, someone in the army. And they borrowed her diaries to see what life was going to be like, essentially. And they were like, oh, these are so good. You should have them published. So she kind of rewrote them and boom, here they are. Um, I think there are four books in the series. This is the first one and it is wonderful. Um, so it's about this husband and wife um Hester Christie and her husband Tim and they have to move from their home to Scotland and he he has to move for work and it's just about the little everyday things of life so employing um new servants and obtaining a new house and sorting out the car and money problems and all these different types of things and school for the children and all these different types of everyday occurrences and I actually really really liked it. I really enjoy Dean Stevenson's writing style. I think she is a wonderful writer and yeah I just really enjoyed this book and I think it's quite sad that these books went out of print as I think it's such a wonderful series. I know that the um, Furred Middlebrow in print which is part of Dean Street Press they publish the other three of them so I'll definitely go and check them out so I can obtain the rest of the books in the series because this was so good and it's so much fun and if you liked E. Stevenson I highly recommend it and if you'd like any kind of very cosy twee type of books then you'll really like this because who doesn't? So there we have it. Those are the books that I read in February and March that haven't featured in any other individual reviews or wrap-ups and there we go. So chat to me in the comments all things of those books that I've just said to you and also if you could let me know about the Amazon thingy because I haven't got a clue and I hate not having answers for people because I just feel a bit rude um, but I think asking help is fine. So thank you so much for watching. Take care and I shall see you soon for the next video. Bye for now.